Are you being told that a daily shot of olive oil will boost your metabolism and clear your skin without hearing how it can quietly increase your risk for chronic disease? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining why chugging olive oil is a bad idea, what linoleic acid means for your health, and how to choose and use oils without undermining your metabolism. I'm Alara Skye, and we'll keep this focused and practical. You'll hear what excessive linoleic acid does inside you, why much of the olive oil on store shelves isn't what you think, and the specific intake limits recommended here so you can act with confidence. Let's start with the TikTok trend. A shot glass holds about 1.5 ounces, which is roughly three tablespoons. That's triple the upper end of what's advised here. Olive oil contains linoleic acid, or LA, an omega-6 fat most people already overconsume. Even when the bottle says extra virgin and organic, the guidance is to cap your intake around a teaspoon per day or less. A daily shot pushes you the wrong way fast. You might ask why LA is a problem. When you consume too much, you generate oxidized linoleic acid metabolites, oxlams, like 4-hydroxynoninol and 9 and 13 hod These compounds are linked to cardiovascular disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, liver inflammation, and fatty liver. Excess LA also impairs mitochondria, the energy systems you rely on. And because LA's half-life is about two years, the damage lingers long after you cut back. These oils are also far more prone to oxidation than monounsaturated fats, turning rancid quickly. Now, to purity. Olive oil's LA typically ranges from about 3% to 21%, depending on cultivar and growing conditions. But there's another variable, adulteration. Tests show that a large share of retail and restaurant olive oil is cut with cheap seed oils like sunflower or peanut, or with lower grade olive oils. That substitution drives LA higher and quality lower. This is why trusted and tested brands matter more than label buzzwords. Adulterants have names worth knowing. Pomace oil is extracted from olive residue using solvents and often blended in without disclosure. Lamponti oil, the lowest grade virgin oil historically used for lamps, must be refined to be edible, stripping flavor and nutrition, then mixed with better oil to mask defects. Enforcement actions have seized large volumes of diluted product, underscoring how common the fraud can be. If you've only ever tasted these blends, you may not know what true extra virgin should smell or feel like. There's also the question of oleic acid, the main fat in olive oil. While it's widely considered heart-friendly, animal studies isolating oleic acid have shown it can worsen insulin resistance in certain contexts. Research on monounsaturated fats suggests they can upregulate desaturase enzymes that promote lipogenesis, your body's conversion of carbohydrate into fat. That doesn't mean olive oil is poison. It means the effects are nuanced and dose-dependent, and it's unwise to treat it like a tonic. Context helps. Observational data linking olive oil to lower mortality often involve modest amounts, around half a tablespoon per day on average, roughly 9 grams. Benefits in those cohorts likely reflect small, consistent use within an overall diet pattern, not large daily shots. If you're using a pure, organic oil, a scant teaspoon may fit, but high intake, especially from adulterated oils, undercuts potential advantages. Let's get practical about testing your bottle. One simple technique discussed here is the refrigerator check. Chill the oil. LA, rich fractions remain more liquid at cold temperatures. You can pour off that liquid component to lower the LA content of what you keep. It's also smart to screen for common quality defects. Rancid oil smells like crayons or putty and tastes like stale nuts. Fusty oil suggests olives fermented without oxygen. Think sweaty, swampy notes. Moldy flavors taste dusty. And wine or vinegar tones point to fermentation with oxygen. Any of these are red flags. Your total LA intake doesn't come from olive oil alone. Processed foods, restaurant meals, and fast foods are loaded with seed oils that covertly raise your daily total. Grain-fed chicken and pork, 
carry higher LA as well, so frequent servings of those meats can push you over the line. The more effective strategy isn't to drown yourself in omega-3s, it's to cut omega-6, especially LA, at the source. There's a target you can use. Keep daily LA under about 5 grams. That's far easier when you cook at home and avoid seed oil-based dressings, sauces, and fryers. If you include olive oil, use a measured teaspoon, not a pour from the bottle. Choose cooking fats with lower LA. This guidance highlights butter, ghee, tallow, coconut oil, and dairy fat. Then use small amounts of a verified olive oil, mainly for finishing. We should also address the narrative around the Mediterranean diet. Yes, olive oil is a signature element, and yes, moderate use in high-quality form can be compatible with good outcomes. But emphasizing large daily doses ignores data on obesity in high-consumption regions and bypasses the metabolic concerns tied to both excess LA and isolated oleic acid. The smarter position is measured use, rigorous sourcing, and attention to your overall omega-6 burden. If you're trying to monitor intake precisely, a tool is on the way. The upcoming Mercola Health Coach app includes Seed Oil Sleuth, designed to estimate LA down to a tenth of a gram. Until that's available, build the habit manually, read labels, choose whole foods, and track when and where oils sneak in, dressings, marinades, baked goods, and healthy snacks. Here's your action plan for the next 24 hours. Check your kitchen for seed oils and swap them out. Put your olive oil in the refrigerator and observe how it behaves. If a portion stays liquid, discard that fraction to lower LA. Starting today, cap olive oil at a teaspoon or less and treat any social media advice to take a shot as a red flag, not a shortcut. Your challenge this week is simple. Prepare most of your meals at home, avoid processed and restaurant foods cooked in seed oils, limit olive oil to a measured teaspoon if you use it, and note any hidden sources of omega-6 from chicken and pork. You'll reduce the oxidized metabolites that drive inflammation and give your mitochondria room to recover. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.